Good evening and welcome to another episode of Big Fat Arts. Well, you've seen it and you've probably wondered what on earth is it all about. It is the Don't Get Mad, Get Elected poster. And tonight our guest is... Bryony Nameby. I had to look then. <laughs> Sorry about that, <laughs> Bryony. It's a tricky one. It is. How are you? Fine. That, Thank you for having me. You are welcome. Now, could we, before we get into the poster, could we just learn a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your background? Okay. Well, um, I'm, I'm the director of Red Planet Screen Prints and we're a community art and design studio. And my background is basically from a community... Um, community activism area. I worked for the Wilderness Society for three years. I worked for Community Aid Abroad for a year. I worked for Amnesty International, both at a grassroots level and a federal government level. Um, and I also worked with the Tasmanian Gay and Lesbian Rights Group in the last kind of 18 months of gay law reform. And so I had a really strong community background, but I also studied screen printing at art school. And this friend of mine, when I was saying, I was living in Hobart and I said, I, I think I might move to Melbourne, I need to go and have some time in the big city. And she said, I've just seen the perfect job for you. It's the director of Red Planet. And, and it was, it has been the perfect job for me. It just combines all of my community activism with all of my arts interest. And I'm, very str I'm a very strong advocate of public art and art as a political vehicle um, mm. or a vehicle for social change. So Red Planet's really... About that. Yeah, absolutely. Getting the message to the people. Mm -hmm. And the history of Red Planet, because it has, well, a controversial beginning? Well, oh, well not really, not for those times. Mm. Uh, Red Planet was actually started from two organisations, Red Letter and Another Planet. Mm -hmm. Red Letter was started in the late 70s and Another Planet was started in the early 80s. They were both Commonwealth employment programs from back then in the good old days yeah. and they were about giving artists skills to help them improve their employment opportunities. And so both these studios ran open access screen printing workshops so that people could come in, learn how to screen print mm -hmm. and then print their own work or um, go and use those skills to perhaps work with other communities. And what happened, of course, was that at the time, the, it was a sort of the peak of the social protest era, the mm. late 70s, early 80s, all, just about all the street poster art and political art that was done around Melbourne in that time was produced at one of these two studios. And so we've got a, an archive of 20 years worth of political street poster art that was produced at those two studios. Um, and in the early 90s, it was decided by a funding body that the two studios should really mer merge together. Mm -hmm. And so they did, Red Letter and Another Planet formed together to become Red, Red Planet. Planet. Hmm. It's, it's interesting really, so would you, one of your directors be with Red Planet? Because we really don't see enough of that, you know, like grassroots street art posters anymore. Is that mm. one of your directors in the company now is to sort of bring that back. Yeah, bring it back? I'd really love to bring it back. Um, I think as far as street art goes, it's always going to have to be about guerrilla action. Mm -hmm. um, we can provide the studio where people can come in and, and print their own sort of activist art pieces. But in terms of putting work out on the streets, it's now quite um, difficult legally because if your name is associated with something that get, gets put up on the street, you can cop quite a hefty fine mm. for doing that. And so I can't risk the studio um, right. um, attracting legal action like that. We're, but, I mean, essentially we're just providing the, the tools, really, for people if they want to get out and do that sort of political act activism, then they're welcome to come in and use our studio. Right. But... Um, Things that we can do are like the Don't Get Mad, Get Elected billboard project, mm -hmm. which, which has a similar kind of impact, I think. Um, we've had fantastic feedback from people who've just driven by and seen the billboards, which are in Richmond and Glen Huntley, and they just ring and say, it's fantastic, we really love what you're doing. And so it's working at a slightly... I mean, I guess it's a more sophisticated level, whereas the old street art was much more grungy. Mm. and. I mean, I really would love to see more of that grungy art happening. But for me, our immediate 
um, priorities is to really get public art, public political art back on the agenda. Because mm. one of the things that we were talking about also um, was the fact that billboards are generally used by the multinationals to, to well, earn money and, and mm. for advertising, which sometimes can be really quite evil. And you've managed to get up something quite political. So it is a bit of a coup d'etat. Was it difficult to do that, like when you applied for the billboard or...? No, no, no. because, well, this is capitalism. They'll <laughs> take anything, you know. Yeah. Um, it, we paid for it and we're funding the billboards from the sale of Get Elected posters. Uh -huh. um, and it actually, it, because billboards are quite a competitive uh, area now, there's quite a few companies that operate them, mm -hmm. the costs for hiring them aren't actually that much and you just have to really meet the costs of printing them. Um, and so we just thought, well, sometimes you just have to take those risks, it risks if it's something that you really believe in. Mm -hmm. And I thought when this poster was first produced, it, was, it looked like this one up behind me here, mm -hmm. uh, much more of a landscape orientation. And uh, I just thought it's such a fantastic poster. It deserves a much, much wider audience. And so we thought, well, we'll just turn it into this format. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, it's fantastic. It's, it's, we've had such well, a good response. One, one more time, because okay. it really is. It's just, I mean, it, it's homoerotic. I mean, I, I was just <laughs> thought, oh, wow, she's heaven. Why can't I meet a girlie like that? And now, also, you mentioned earlier about your involvement with the um, Tasmanian gay law reform. Mm -hmm. And can we show this poster? And can you give us a little bit of the, the history about your involvement there and also how this one came about? Because this one's fabulous. Yeah. Um, when I, I'd lived in Tasmania for a, a couple of years and hadn't really been involved with the group, mm -hmm. went away to Canberra for a year and then came back and thought, right, I really want to get involved with this group because they're just doing fabulous stuff. And, and so um, rang the office and said, look, you know, I've had experience as an events coordinator and a fundraiser with the Wilderness Society and with Amnesty International and I'd really like to help you out some way and of course they were totally broke mm. and really needed someone to do some events for them to raise some money and so I went along expecting there to be this huge group of people there and there's you know Rodney Croom, Nick Toonan, <laughs> Richard Hale, a couple of other people and that was it and, it's, and so um, I became the events coordinator and organised some dance parties. We organised I'd never organised a dance party in my life before and thought, well, how difficult can it be? And so we set up this fabulous, fabulous um, event which was called Judgment Day mm -hmm. um, to raise money for the High Court Challenge. And that was a fantastic success. People were coming up afterwards and saying it was the best event they'd ever been to in Hobart, mm -hmm. actually ever been to anywhere. Because yeah. it had such a great community feel. Um, Anyway, so I did that sort of thing. I organised a fair day and just kind of helped out with things. Um, it, was an, it was an amazing time, the final year of gay law reform, because we were just inching closer and closer and um, gradually more and more and more of the political support was swinging our way. Mm. And, you know, it was agonising having to sit through late night debates in the Legislative Council, which were just, you know, it's just this group of dinosaurs, <laughs> it was back then, <laughs> um, who were just so homophobic and so bitter and fearful. And it was just a really horrible thing to have to witness. And yet outside of that, there was this amazing passion and feeling about um, what a significant international time this was. So with posters like that, you would have had them on the streets, of course. Did you find that people were ripping them down because they are? Well, this that was actually done. That poster was actually done as a celebration mm -hmm. after gay law reform. Right. So um, not a lot of street postering went on in Hobart. Mm -hmm. It's the same sort of situation there. A lot of banners um, and also there was the, the stall at the Salamanca market, right, yeah. which was started in the 80s and, and you know, resulted in a hundred arrests or something yeah. just for people being out there on the street saying, we support gay law reform. Um, but they managed to keep that stall going even after the arrests and it still goes to this day. And that was, Salamanca markets attracts an enormous 
um, segment of the Hobart community oh, every weekend. Oh, and it's world-renowned too, the Selenium Market. Yeah, market. yeah, and so that was a great presence, great street presence. Yeah. Now, just very quickly, this one, you also did safe sex posters. And this one's just fantastic, really. Mm. Mm. That was done by an artist called Jenny Leach. Mm. She had, had no screen printing experience. We did this as an artist in residency program last year. Uh -huh. uh, we had three artists, Jenny Leach, Marcus Bunyan and Angela Bailey. And they we just said, you know, just do whatever you want on safe sex and we got three very diverse posters. Mm -hmm. This one was supposed to be aimed at queer youth and it was just about um, trying to have a sort of a genderless Christ figure with new, um, I guess, new guidelines for the modern modern life. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Now, also, I believe you're having an auction. Red Planet are having an auction of posters. Yes, in about a month. Our mm. next, I can't believe we're doing another major event so mm. soon after the billboard, but in a month's time we're doing... And we're holding an auction of 50 posters from the late 70s, early 80s. Fabulous street poster art. Mm -hmm. And um, that's going to be in Fitzroy. And it's going to be one of the first opportunities people have had to actually buy a real piece of Melbourne social history. Fantastic. Yeah, it should be great. And when it, do you know the date of that? The 21st of November. 21st of mm -hmm. November. So if anybody wants more informa information about that, they can ring us at Bank TV. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it sounds fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And what would we see next from Red Planet? Will we be using that billboard or? Um, then what will we be doing? Yeah. Uh, well, next year, next year we've got a bit of a coup happening. Yeah. Um, I've just found out that we've received funding to bring the Gorilla Girls out from the States. Mm -hmm. um, the Gorilla Girls are a female arts activist body and they'll be coming out in August next year and we'll be doing Fantastic. a lot of collaborative work with them. Bryony, thank you very much for joining us. That's the end of another show and we'll see you next week.